hello everyone. So if you are here, it's because you are a brave human taking the time to develop yourself as a person with additional interests. So the thing is, society pushes us to believe that if you are not working, brackets, you are not productive. But guess what? Guess what? We are not machines, we're humans. So uh, let's bring some context. So the word productivity is a measure of economic performance. So that means that the, the productivity equals to the amount of input you put in a machine, then you are expecting more outcome than the input you put. Um, and that's the meaning of productivity. But let's change the narrative and see career breaks as opportunities to gain additional experience in life because uh, life skills and skills itself uh, are developed through experiences. And those experiences and those new skills may or may not directly benefit your career, but there will always be something you learned or gain. And this new knowledge and skills will help you to reshape the next chapter of your career. So you see, a career break is not simple, a period of unemployment. So we need to own our own story and then we need to change the narrative. So there are many, many, many uh, situations in which we are forced to leave the workforce or we actually take the decision to take some time. And then those, uh, th this list is not comprehensive. So it can be that because we are dealing with mental health problems, because we want to travel the world, because we want to do some voluntary work, um, because we want to study, or is it a career exploration, a new path, or probably we need to take care of a family member, or perhaps raising children, or we are recovering from accidents or illnesses. And yes, give that mom a round of applause, because I myself, I am a mom, and it is not an easy job. So success, we like and love as society this word. So, but success means different things and it is okay. So success in my pre-kids life, success to me meant to have a lot of business trips, to be super busy all the time. And basically I felt proud uh, of saying at that time, uh, you know, my agenda is super full. I don't have time. What a stupid, silly me, young uh, Keiko, right? So, but success is very different from person to person. And it is not a straight line. So, because life happens, life is messy. And in reality, success has a lot of detours. But the thing is on LinkedIn, or when we share conversations with our network, with our community, we tend to avoid the dark moments. And we only share like the peak of the success. And it seemed like it was an overnight success, but believe me, it is not. So this is my timeline of my uh, career breaks along my professional development. So when I started working, I had a, what you probably call successful career development. I uh, joined big corporations, um, fashion names, cosmetic names. Uh, so uh, LVMH, we with Tom, Hennessy, Christian Dior, Kenzo, um, Covergirl, Max Factor, Natura Cosmetics. But in my personal life, I was really miserable. So uh, like the famous song of Mariah Carey, all by myself. So I was literally all by myself. Uh, so I had no time for my personal life. And then um, a few years later, after this successful career development, I met my now husband. And at that time he was living in England and we decided to move together. And that's when I decided to take this career break. So um, I moved to the UK um, and then I decided to study my master's. So I obtained my master's degree there. And after that, we traveled the world. And it was a three year career break. 
And in my personal life, it was just the opposite. It was a life-changing moment to me. I was happier like I've never been before. And uh, But that was my personal life. And when in my professional life, on my CV, of course, um, recruiters couldn't see that, right? But it doesn't matter because to me, I was having the time of my life. But nonetheless, I gained new skills. And those new skills, by moving abroad, by obtaining my master's degree, and by traveling the world, then I gained international experience, multicultural awareness. I got very good at problem solving because when you uh, live abroad, you need to overcome a lot of obstacles by yourself. Um, and then language skills and networking and communication skills. So you don't realize this, but you are very good at connecting all the time and transmitting your ideas. And then uh, we take this for granted and you we move more often than not, we don't realize how much we've gained. Um, and then we decided to return to Mexico, my home country, and I joined again the uh, corporate world and I had again my successful career development. And then I started working for fashion brands, Coach and Thomas Pink. Um, and again, I did not have enough time for my personal life because I was working. So in my contract, it was a uh, from nine to five contract, but in reality, it was from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Um, so I did not have time again um, and I was not happy with that job. And I said, oh, so this is not for me, right? And at that time we were thinking in having kids. And then I said, so this is not compatible. Um, so then I took my second career break and it lasted um, for about one year. And that's how I joined Mom Life. And believe me, it is hard. So if you have a friend who is right now in maternity on maternity leave, or if there's something out there who is right now in that uh, period of, of life, so uh, a big applause to you because it's not easy. If you think that moms are just laying on beds, uh, watching Netflix, and having the time of their lives. So it is not as easy as it sounds. So being a mom uh, brings to the table a whole new skill set. It is a, a intensive skills development bootcamp. Uh, so you need to learn how to do uh, time management, uh, planning skills, so crisis management, budget management. And you need to constantly develop and evolve and learn on a daily basis because nobody, uh, there is a no, there's no book, right? So how to become a mom. So then I thought, okay, I really miss my professional life. And this time it was not easy to join again the workforce. And then here's when I realized like, ah, okay, so it is okay for companies if I, take a three-year-old, a three-year uh, gap, career uh, break, sorry, because of, uh, I wanted to travel the world and because I wanted to study abroad, but it's not okay if I take one year because of, I decided to have kids, to raise to, uh, a kid. Um, so it was hard. And then it is when I realized that, that I needed to own my story so that my mistake was to let other people um, create my life story and I said no this is not good so I mean it's my life my story my narrative um, but again I joined another company and it was a really nice experience because then I had a time to go so the, the office was quite close to to my home and so I had a time to go and have lunch with with my then uh, one-year-old kid and my husband, and um, that meant that I had a time to work in the afternoons from home. So it was kind of paradise. Uh, and then life happens, and yeah, we're crazy. And we decided to have our second kid. And at the same time, my husband got a promotion. 
So we are that crazy that we said, hey, why don't we just move to a country where we don't speak the language? So we moved to Germany, uh, to Munich, and I had uh, my second maternity leave. And then my second kid was born prematurely at seven months. So it was uh, really the first year in Germany, year and a half was really hard, not only because I needed to adapt myself to a new culture, new language. I didn't have the time to learn the language like right from the beginning because I was taking care of my family and my premature baby. Um, But still, once the family was settled, then I decided to join again the workforce. And this next uh, stage step was not easy, but um, because I got rejected many times, uh, one, because my lack of, of knowledge in the language, the local language, and second, because I did not have experience in the European market. But then when you are an expat, um, you have these networking events, and I used to join as many as I could. And I met an, uh, my now best friend, Paula, and at that time she was building her own company related with cosmetics, and she was looking for a person who uh, could help her with the marketing area. And then I started working with her, but this opportunity came through networking. Um, And then COVID happened. And I cannot, uh, I mean, you don't don't need to know any details because you've lived uh, this this experience um, just like me. And it was a one year career break. I needed to do the full time parenting. Um, but at the same time, this time I decided to upskilling. So then I did these exercises about my strengths and my weaknesses. So I started looking for jobs. And then I realized that so the way they were describing these new marketing positions. Uh, were not compatible with the wording that I was putting on my CV. And then um, I realized that I needed to upskill and then just to update my, my skill set. So I started starting with LinkedIn, Atomy, these e-learning platforms. But uh, again, my new skills were that family matters more than we realize. Um, that partners are critical to our well-being and we need and we need to have these open conversations with our partners about how sharing the household responsibilities is important we need support i mean uh, if we are support when you have a partner that means that you are the cheerleader of the other person right and it's two ways um, and self-care is not self-indulgence. And of course, COVID um, made me do this introspection work. And then I had the opportunity to reflect on a deeper deeper sense, the purpose that I wanted to do in this life, with my life. And then I decided that I did not want to use my skills to help uh, big corporations to build this world of uh, stereotypes because I have a boy and a girl. And then I said, no, I want to use my skills to help probably a small business and then to develop different um, ideas. And uh, at the same time, I joined DPS. So then I was looking uh, kind of a program or something to that, that helped me with the upskilling part. And uh, I discovered DPS. I joined Digital Product School as product marketing and communication. It was a great experience. Uh, If you don't know about DPS, just uh, Google the page and you can apply from anywhere in the world. It is an amazing experience. And at the same time, I learned about Amiga. If you are in Germany, um, later I will share the details with you. Uh, It it is a career center. And through Amiga, this organization, I worked with a career coach for about three months. And it was a game changer. So through exercises, I learned and discovered my new purpose in life and how I wanted to use my skills for my next chapter in my life. 
And also I learned the, the traits, the must haves that I was looking for in my next uh, challenge. So here are my five tips for you. So the first one is uh, do the work and work on your career life timeline. If you are in Germany, again, please get in touch with the Amiga organization. And by doing this time life, you will realize like how past events have led you to where you are now. And you will find out um, opportunities that you've missed, passions or hobbies that probably you don't even remember now, but you are very good at it. Um, the second advice is put your experience into perspective, uh, career breaks included. So just because you feel that you are not productive, that does not mean that you haven't been productive. So you've learned new skills for sure. You just need to take the time to digest your experiences and to truly understand how these experiences are shaping your life. So write what you like and dislike from your last job and think about one or two projects or activities that the, the two activities that you remember the most and use the STAR method. So which is situation, task, action, and result. And the outcome of this is that you will write again and you will remember what you did. So the information will be fresh again in your brain. And the second part is that you are preparing yourself for your next round of interviews. Because if you use this start method, then you are just giving the right information to the questions that this um, recruiter will ask you. The third tip is uh, a list of must and must not haves. So what's your minimum requirement for your next job search? And stick to the list. If you say, so for example, to me, Remote working is uh, non-negotiable. So having this flexibility to me is number one. So as we speak right now, I'm in Italy because my kids have a two week holiday and then we are in, in uh, Airbnb. And the fact that I can work from anywhere in Europe, it is a non-negotiable for me. Um, tip number four is update your CV with the latest uh, vocabulary. Look for positions that you had and the positions that you are interested in and compare how recruited describe these positions and update your CV with this new vocabulary. And the last point is make this exercise about your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then upskill in the areas where you are interested in or where you think you lack of um, skills. And keep your uh, CV updated and add new projects. Um, during career breaks, maybe you joined, um, you, do, you did voluntary work, or if you are a mom or a dad, maybe you joined these um, teachers and parents associations, and then very likely that you need to plan in advance or you need to do some uh, budget management. So all of these count uh, for your CV. And the final words is just normalize career breaks. And it is important to share your story, to connect with people and to inspire others. So let's just um, openly talk about these situations. And then the more we talk, the more people will realize that it is normal because we are humans and because life happens. Change is messy, growth is messy, life is messy, but uh, just raise your hand and ask for help within your network or ask for help outside your network. So here are some resources um, that can help you. So one is uh, a website with a lot of career coach exercises. Uh, and if you follow like by the book, these instructions, trust me, you will gain a lot of knowledge about the real you, the new you, and what you are looking for. There's also this returner uh, toolkit, and then it, it was made by uh, a British organization, and it is very comprehensive, and they gave a lot of tips of, uh, they give a lot of tips about how you can start um, your job search, how to, to kick up your, your job search. 
and DPS, of course, if you didn't know about this, it is an awesome uh, three month program uh, that you can apply from anywhere in, I'm not sure if in the world. Yeah, in the world, yes. And then there's this organization in Germany, Amiga, and it is a career center and it is for free. You just need to send an email and say, hey, I need your help. So that's it. You got this. And the QR code is to have this presentation and the resources. If, and I hope that it can help you in any way. So thanks for joining me. And I wish you all the best. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer.